everybody, it is day five of my tournament in Mallorca, Spain, and I am right now by the most beautiful setting. I'm by the sea. <laughs> I went to the beach and it is right now around 12 p.m. And the sea is just so beautiful. I'm, I'm next to the beach, but it is all green and blue and it has like so many different shades and I love it here. And you can see over there another island that's pretty close as well, which is called Cabrera. I'm here with my dad, we're walking around and I'm gonna hang around here for a little bit and then I'm gonna get lunch and then I'm gonna start preparing for today's round. I'll see you soon. I am so happy. My whole goal today was to make it here and I did. It actually only takes like 10 minutes and it's a super cute beach. Like the sand is completely white and you know, there's like a bunch of people. It's so pretty and it's like a little town with a bunch of like bars and restaurants and I love it here. It's amazing. So no matter what happens today, I've fulfilled my goal. <laughs> back. I spent quite a long time this morning by the beach and it was super duper nice but after I came back I thought that I had to compensate by spending that much time inside preparing for my chess game. It is now 6 30 p.m which is why the sun is over here. I am literally like I can't see anything but you know it is what it is. The sun is here. I, I from Sweden I can't complain about having too much sun anyways it's 6 30 p.m. right now the game is starting in one and a half hour and I have finished preparing for my game today everybody I am playing wait I need to actually wait I need to actually see the name I don't remember it Bovilas Lasinskas I don't think that's how you pronounce it. He's from Lithuania. He was born in 1970 and he's rated 2130. He is a FIDE master though. So I believe he's been high rated in the past and he's gone down in rating with time. I'm pretty sure he's going to play D4. I'm playing with the black pieces and I've seen that he's done this kind of setup with knight C3, bishop G5. So I'm either expecting a Trumpovsky or I'm expecting him to go first knight C3, bishop G5 or I'm expecting him to go for a queen's gambit. And if he does that, well, you'll see what I'll what I'll do then but I've been preparing for approximately two hours I feel pretty good now it's time to get some food and then time to play my tournament game round number five I just finished my game five hours later and I'm really excited to show it to you. So I'm gonna go back to my room and you will see it. Guess who completely predicted what their opponent was gonna play? I did! <laughs> I was so happy when my opponent played his opening moves because that was exactly what I had prepared. So the game started D4. I had the black pieces, knight of six. And now from what I had seen, he typically used to play C4. But I saw that in this tournament, he did something a little bit different. He went knight c3, and then, um, well, in the other games, d5 was not played, but he ended up going bishop g5, and then e3, f4. So I was like, hmm, what happens if he does that against me? So I actually had prepared all of this, and I was blitzing out the moves in the beginning, and I was so happy. e3 and then e6, and I even correctly predicted that he would go f4, which is literally a mistake. It's not a good move to go f4, but I, I kind of had the feeling he was gonna do it because he seemed to like to put his pawn on f4. So now I went in this position, um, c5, just simply targeting the center. And then we went knight f3, I went h6 to kick away the bishop, and this was once again all preparation. I knew that he was going to play bishop h4 because that's what he always has played um, in all of the games when the bishop has been kicked out. And now the move that was the key move here, queen a5. And now what I'm doing is that I'm pinning this knight and I'm planning to bring my knight up to e4. Now I had looked at a lot of different lines here, um, but he ended up going for bishop takes f6 and then just bring out the bishop and checking my king. Now the only thing that I can do is to block the check to make sure that um, my king can still castle. And then after this, I was quite happy because I had like an hour 17 left. <laughs> and we start the games with an hour 30 on the clock each. So I had spent 13 minutes 
on the first 11 moves, which may sound like a lot, but it's really good for being neat. Like there's been games when I've had like 30 minutes left at this point. I mean, it's actually, you know, I'm, I'm terrible with time management. That's the one thing that I really am bad at and that I am really trying to work with. My goal is always to have 40 minutes and move 20. So I was telling myself, Anna, at move 20, you gotta have at least 40 minutes left on your clock because you get extra time at move 40. So um, you get 15 minutes extra time in this tournament, but typically it's either 15 or 30 minutes extra. So it's always just important to have, you know, enough time by then. So I was playing fast and I went bishop e7 and I felt like all of these moves were pretty natural. And then he brought his knight up to the center and I knew that I had to exchange this knight because otherwise the knight just becomes too good and now I castled. And now after he went 92, this was the time when I needed to start thinking. Actually, when he played 92, he looked like, you know, he was kind of doubting his move, but he was playing all the moves instantly. Like he had not even spent a minute in total on all of these moves. He still had an hour 30 on the clock. <laughs> so, you know, um, he was playing extremely fast and very determined. But here, what I quickly realized was that this pawn is the big weakness in white's position. So I thought here that I was slightly better, but especially I just thought that I need to try to target this pawn somehow. Now, probably here, a nice idea would have been to um, go something like queen b6. I could have done that, but there's a lot of different ideas that I could go for. I ended up going bishop g5, which is totally fine. And then after knight f4, here actually I went queen b6 with the idea of targeting this pawn but it could have been better to go queen b4 instead. But queen b6 is pretty fine. Um, and then he went rook b1 to defend this pawn. I'm targeting this pawn right now. So in this position, everything that I wanted to do was that I wanted to push f6. Like this was everything I wanted to do. I just wanted to push this pawn. Why did I want to push it? Because I really wanted to break open his little center of pawns because it would be much easier for me to target them. And keep in mind, everything that I want is to win one pawn. If I'm able to win one pawn, I'll be at a huge advantage. I'll be really happy. So everything that I'm trying to do right now is win a pawn. Also, if I keep on like scratching, like, you know, my arms, I've gotten like so bitten by mosquitoes. Like, I don't get it. I, I don't understand why mosquitoes love me so much. I thought they didn't love me because the first few days I didn't get a single mosquito bite, but now, now I've been attacked. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so here after rook v1, I decided that it might be a good idea to bring another piece. So I brought my rook in here and the idea was that if takes, I wanted to have the possibility to maybe take with the rook in case I moved my queen. So that was the reason I went here, but also to maybe be able to capture here and target the c2 pawn. So that's why he went c3 so that this pawn would not be a target anymore. And here I made a slight mistake. Um, and like I said, everything that I wanted to do was to play f6, right? So what did I do? I played f6, but f6 was not so good. <laughs> now f6 is totally fine if it wasn't because of the fact that he has this move knight g6. But he didn't play it. And I was really scared. I actually spent quite some time here. I was really scared about him going knight g6. In fact, at this point, I only had like 37 minutes or something. Um, and, and the reason I was really scared about it was because he's giving me a pawn but after the king moves, actually, I was gonna go rook f7 here because he's threatening this 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 fork. But after takes, takes, and queen h5, this is scary. This is really scary. My king is very weak even though I'm a pawn up and this is not a clear position at all. So that's why I'm saying that this move f6 was actually a mistake because in my brain, I hadn't really figured this out. I kind of just hoped he wouldn't play it and just said, okay, if he plays it, at least I'm an extra pawn up, but I'll have to figure it out then. But it's a very unclear position. I can maybe take this pawn as well, but you know, stuff is hanging here. It's really not so pleasant, but you know, after f6, he went, he captured, and I was so happy that he didn't go for knight g6, and now I was happy. Rook takes, and then g3. Now, in this position, um, I ended up taking here, and he took back, and now I have this insane move, which I did not see. So here I went queen a6 because I wanted to start taking control of the light squares. That was the idea of this move. But I have this crazy move, bishop takes f4, and now, if g takes f4, which I thought he was going to play, 
e5, sacrificing a pawn. You can take it in two ways. If you take it with this pawn, I'll be able to take this pawn. And if you take it with this pawn, I mean, I just have to show you, I have rook takes f1, queen takes, and then queen g6 check. And after this, and rook f8, this is an extremely good position for me because this rook is targeted. This queen cannot go to a lot of places and I'm threatening a bunch of checks and this king is so weak. I did not see this during the game. This is a really difficult line, at least for me. I did not see that, but I just thought that was so pretty. I had to show it to you. So I went queen a6 with the idea of taking control of the light scores. I was still feeling pretty good here. I felt like I was slightly better and I was definitely trying to push for the win at this point because I felt like I was, it was equal. Um, so I didn't see why not, you know? So he went a3 because I was targeting this pawn once again. He was still playing really fast. And now I went rook c4 just to activate my rook. Queen d2. And now finally I ended up getting rid of this knight because now he was actually defending the pawn and I didn't want this knight jumping around. So I captured, captured queen c6 to take control of the c file. Um, and then he went rook up too. Now here I thought, okay, we got to start creating some sort of attack on the queen side. So I started pushing up my pawns and... Yeah, there we go. I, I, I pushed up both of my pawns. And here, if he would capture my pawn, the idea is that I have this move rook c1 check and after it takes, sorry, it takes, guys, I can't move. <laughs> after it takes, 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 I can take here. And I mean, is it completely winning? No, it's not, but it's quite pleasant for me. Like my queen is pretty good. Um, I'll probably go queen b1 and this king is gonna be very weak. So that was my idea here. So on a5 and he did, he did not take it when king h1 and now I just started pushing my pawns. Now, here I started getting a little bit scared because I was starting to get low on time. This was move 26 and he doubled up the rooks in front of my king. And let me tell you something, you know, it's scary. I saw this queen and these two rooks staring at my king and I got quite scared. So right now he's immediately threatening to go rook takes g7. So I had to defend. So I went rook f7 to defend. But this might have been a mistake because here he had this move I was really scared about, rook g6. And to be honest, I'm still not exactly sure what I would have done here. I think I was gonna move my king, but the reason I found this quite scary, I think I was gonna go something like maybe king f8, but I was always really scared that there would be this move f5, uh, trying to break everything open. So I was really scared about this, but he didn't do it. Instead, I went for this move queen d3, which made me very happy. So I went rook c1 to try to trade one rook because these two rooks were very scary. And now he went queen g6 and he brought the queen in. And once again, I started getting a little bit scared because look at how, how many pieces are pointing at my king. Um, but I went king f8 and tried to escape. I was slightly worried maybe about queen h7 and the queen coming in, but he just went h3. And I feel like in, you know, a few of these like critical moments, um, I was quite happy that he was playing maybe a little bit more of a passive move. Um, cause I was really scared about him going for all of these really active moves. So yeah, it was like, I don't know. I was so focused. It felt like I was like driving on like a really fast car. Wait, actually, I don't know where I'm getting with this. <laughs> I actually have no idea where I'm getting with this. <laughs> okay. You know what? Whatever. I was just happy that he wasn't going for the most critical lines. <laughs> um, so here I went for this move v3, which I think is a really good move um, because I'm now basically locking in this pawn and my idea is always going to be to go rook c2 and create a pass pawn and then just promote. So he went queen b3, he went back with the queen and now I went a4, throw in my rook and now I traded one of the rooks because once again, I, I just thought it was really important to trade one, one of the rooks. He kept her with the king and I decided to bring now this rook into action because now I don't need to defend as much anymore now that one of the rooks is gone. So queen before check, I moved my king and now I felt like I had a really good position because I felt like he hadn't done so much like development, like his position wasn't much better, but now I had these two pawns that were extremely strong that were stopping his, his pawns forever. So king h2, I went king h7 just to get my king out of trouble. I only had a few seconds here. It was really funny because um, I went down to like five seconds at some point, but I was actually feeling really calm in this position. I feel like I had everything under control simply because of the fact that I was controlling the c-file and my pawns were so good. So as long as I didn't let the, the queen come in to the game, I was feeling pretty good. I just had to make sure he couldn't go right over here. So in this position, you know, I thought for quite a while and my mom, she thought I was almost going to flag. <laughs> But I was thinking at first going queen c1, but I think this is a mistake because he has queen g3. And after this, 
he's looking towards this g7 pawn but he's also maybe threatening f5 at some point and this move is always a scary move for me so i always need to be careful so i decided that the plan for me was to bring a queen to f5 and a rook to c4 and i thought if i'm able to do that if i'm able to bring the queen to f5 a rook to c4 i have a winning position so i just decided to do that so i went queen e8 with the yoke going queen f7 and now i went queen b1 check king g8 queen d3 rook c4 i didn't want to let the queen to come in and then e4 and now that was a sort of desperate attempt but if he doesn't do it if he goes something like queen d1 i'm gonna go queen f7 queen f5 rook c2 and it's just gonna be lost so he went e4 in a kind of desperate attempt but now i went queen f7 defending but also attacking and now finally after f5 i captured and this was my 40th move now you know i was able to breathe out because i had some extra time so actually you know we started at this point actually i had more time than him at one point there was a difference of like me having like 10 minutes and him having an hour but here actually like i had more time than him he thought a lot in these positions so he ended up taking an f5 and then i went queen c7 check and in this position i thought the game was over i thought you know he's gonna resign but he did not resign and the game was far from over which i did not know so here the idea with this check is that my plan is always to go rook c2 because i just want to force this rook to stay here because he can never capture us then i would just make a queen so the idea is that if he would move his king or something i mean i'm just going to check him and this is just going to be an absolute disaster i'll take and bring sorry i won't go there i'll go here here and then after queen check i just want to show this to you so that you guys can see it um i'll be able to take and if he goes somewhere else i'll be able to go queen c2 check and force the exchange and then i'm making a queen so he has to be really careful so he ended up going queen g3 to get into a rook game, which I think was his best attempt. So takes, takes, and rook c2, really important. I don't care about this pawn. I care about having my rook here because he can right now never capture it. And if he moves the rook, I'll be able to take the pawn. So he moved this king, I moved my king up, and now he had to move the rook because I was threatening otherwise to just simply take and then bring my king up and just win the pawn in game. So he went rook g6, and now I realized that the game was actually not completely over. I had to be careful here. So I took the pawn, and he went rook a6. And now it was crucial. I needed to constantly find the best move still. It was crucial for me to go rook b1. The idea, if he goes takes, I have b2. And now there's nothing he can do to stop my promotion. If rook check, so if rook there, I'll be able to check and make a queen. So this is really important. So after... He had, to, he had to go rook b6 to stop me from pushing. And now going b2 would actually be a draw probably. So I still needed to be careful. But um, I needed to go rook d1 or rook a1, I believe. Um, or rook e1. But the, one of those moves. I ended up going rook d1, which I think is fine. Now I think that he should go king e3. Um, because he went rook b4, but now he just allowed my king to come in. And now my king was just so good. So as soon as the king comes in, I think the game is over. So he went there. I simply moved my rook and took the pawn and took another pawn and, well, pushed my pawn. And in this position, he resigned. And just like this, everybody, I beat a 2100 FM. My opponent was a feeder master. I was actually so happy. My opponent was a feeder master and, uh, yeah, I, I, I won. <laughs> I felt so good after the game. Um, the game took around five hours. I was really tired though at the end. I am right now, it's like 2.37 a.m. I'm gonna go and get some sleep, I'm super tired. But I'm so happy that I won this game. I am right now making a performance of, I think 22.20, something around that, which is 200 points more than my rating. I'm winning like 23 points of rating and I'm right now on three out of five points, which is pretty good. All right, everybody. Time for me to go to bed. <laughs> Good night. Thank you so much for watching today's video and recap. I will see you all tomorrow for round number six. Good night, everybody.